All right, so trying tying a fly. Uh, this is called a muddler minnow, um, and it's a pattern that, um, well, it's a it's a really simple pattern in some ways, but um, but really effective. Um, and it was taught to me by Frank Aragoni, my dad's cousin. Um, so I should give him credit. Um, first step is you put the hook in the vise. Um, you have to sort of adjust the tension and clamp it as tightly as you can. I always test it by sort of using a fingernail and kind of tinging the um, front of it. Just making sure it's not going to go anywhere once you start putting the string on. Um, next part, you sort of hold this piece against the hook um, and then wrap it um, a bunch of times until you're sort of covering the piece all the way to the back of the hook. And then trim any excess if you care. Uh, this time I don't really care. Um, and I want this to sink. So I'm going to use a little bit of heavy stuff. Um, this time in the winter it's, uh, it's kind of um, tough to catch surface anything. So if I can find the end of this, I'm gonna, there it is. Um, I'm going to tie just a body of this uh, lead wire. All the way to the front. So the um, so the string is all the way to the front, and I'm just going to do lead core. I'm not I'm not going to go all the way thick with it. But it just adds a little weight, makes the thing more likely to sink in the water. And then once you get to the front, you hold it in front and you can kind of tie it off with a couple more loops of this. By the way, the thread I'm using is actually quilting thread. Um, that's kind of a hack uh, my grandmother taught me. Um, she used to use very thick quilting thread to do her quilts. So I was able to start doing that with my flies. Um, and I found, especially for a beginner, you're less likely to snap the, um, snap the line. So, all right, next part, we want a wing on this thing. So, um, so the wing is gonna be deer hair. So I have this piece of deer hair. And, um, my dad's cousin always said sparse was a little bit better. Um, I don't know why exactly, um, but it seems to work more effectively with the brook trout and the um, other kinds of fish we were trying to catch. We, we caught landlocks, and around here in Connecticut we do, um, you know, for browns and rainbows in the Farmington. So only about this much. Um, we tie the wings so that it's like, I don't know, maybe a third past the tail. So what I do is I wrap it sort of loose. Um, and I hold it a little bit toward me. So, and then you pull it tight. And my finger's probably blocking it, but you can see it sort of splays in the front now. Um, so I'm going to tie a little bit ahead of that so that you can still see the eye of the hook. Now, a lot of people do like a whip finish or something, but all I do really is I make a little loop and I put it over the head and I pull it tight. And I do that like, I don't know, eight to ten times. Um, so it's really, it's just an overhand knot, um, but you do a bunch of them. So they become strong when you do a bunch like that. So there's eight. Um, I don't use any head cement or anything. Um, usually, you know, if the if the fly gets beat up to the point where the head where the string comes off, um, it's already pretty bad. Um, so you're going to have to retie it anyway. These are some curved Dr. Slicks. Uh, what I do is just hold the wing 
and then kind of trim it so that there's just a little bit of fuzziness to there. Um, I don't do I don't do a full muddler head. Um, I just kind of trim this so it looks a little bit like an elk hair caddis. Um, but then it's a relatively simple fly. Oh, I'm gonna need to trim that so you can see like there's just a little bit of stuff at the end there. So if I spin this around, there now it's trimmed off. Um, and so what happens is the stuff in the front kind of makes bubbles in the water and sometimes it'll catch a fish. All right. Happy tying everybody. Have a nice day.